So in our studio today we have a really exciting new acquisition. Um, this is a jacket worn by the Queen, um, Elizabeth II, our current Queen, when she was a baby in 1927. And this is a particularly exciting new acquisition for us as we don't have many items of costume belonging to the Queen in our collection. Um, we have items belonging to Princess Diana and George III, um, but items belonging to our current monarch we don't have very many of. This item of child's dress was gifted by the Queen to her much-loved nanny, Clara Knight. So here you can see Princess Elizabeth um, wearing the jacket when she was a baby in 1927, presumably being taken out for an airing with her nanny. Um, and it's really great provenance to the object to have this photo alongside it. It's coming to our studio today because it's in relatively poor condition. Um, during the late 19th, early 20th century, um, silk was weighted with tin salts in order to replace the sericin which was lost during the degumming process. So silk was traditionally sold by weight and weighting agents were added in order to return the monetary value and also to increase the shine and the drape and the impression of quality of the silk. Over time, as you can see, tin weighting had less desirable effects as the process of tin weighting involved soaking your silk in um, tin salts at high pH for long periods of time, which resulted in this extremely weak silk that splits and shatters. So I'm working through each area of damage individually and I'm starting with the weakest area through to the strongest area. This might not always be our approach, but with this object, because the material is so weak, I wanted to start on the weakest area first. So I've started with the collar, which you can see is the most damaged, working through into the cuffs, which are frayed at the edges. So the collar that I'm working on today is lined, and it's only the collar and the cuffs that are lined. The rest of the jacket is unlined. So presumably, Princess Elizabeth would have worn another layer underneath or two. So I've put patches through the areas of damage, so patches of um, silk habitat, which we have our in-house dye technicians dye for us with conservation dyes to colour match the object that we're working on because we want our conservation work to be as visually discreet as possible so not distract from the object when it's on display and then over the top of the whole shape of the collar here we've got um, silk crepeline which is this semi-transparent support fabric which we've got here and I've supported it with as minimal stitching as possible because I don't want to put any holes through the silk. So I've been stitching the two support fabrics together through the areas of damage. And then where I have done stitching to the object, I've stitched in stronger areas, so around the areas of embroidery. And this has been done through a microscope on a laptop. So I can see that I'm going through the gaps in the weave or the interstices, we call them, rather than splitting any fibres and further weakening the silk. We want to preserve objects like this, not only for enjoyment now, but for future generations to learn from and to enhance an understanding of a significant period of history and of a significant historical figure.